What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Rob here, back in the lab with the queue. I am downloading some software updates to the Apex cluster, and I figured this time around, I will bring you along on the journey so you can see step-by-step step how it's done. As a Square Wheels customer, you will be receiving periodic emails from me letting you know when there's an update file available for you to install on your Apex cluster. Now, not all updates are mandatory. So in each update email, what I'm gonna give you is kind of like a rundown of the enhancements or the bug fixes or whatever they are that are included in the update files. And then you can decide whether or not you want to update them. Now, these things aren't necessarily like cell phones or computers. You don't have to update them, you know, every other day because they're not connected to the internet. They're not, you know, subject to all the exploits and everything that everybody's trying to hotfix. These are just updates that kind of enhance the capabilities and fix any issues that we're aware of as they get reported uh, by customers like yourselves. So what I'm going to do today is just walk you through the up update process. It is really simple. It's very similar to the process for the uh, G series screens. You're basically going to download a file to your USB thumb drive. You're going to pop that USB thumb drive into the USB adapter on your Apex cluster and you're going to let the update finish. That's it. You don't even have to watch the rest of the video, but I am going to go through it in detail. I'm going to make sure you understand what's getting uploaded, what's getting updated, the difference between a CAN bus update and a firmware update, the file names that you're going to need to have matching, the directory structure that you're going to need to have happen. I'm going to go through everything. So. Here goes another one. Sit tight. See you on the other side. Oops. All right, so here I am uh, back in the office. Uh, let's just pretend I just received an email notification from my Square Wheel support team letting me know that I've got a Apex cluster software update. What I'm gonna do is uh, open up the email. I'll bring you along on the journey. Your email is going to look something like this. It'll say at the top, hey, new Apex update, new updates just launched for your Apex. Check out the latest updates and download by the links below. Now, um, in these emails, what I'm going to do is list out all of the updates and enhancements and bug fixes that are included in each patch so that you can make an informed decision whether or not you want to install this update now. Um, this is a brand new product in early 2025. It's just launched for the Infinity Q50 and we're targeting other makes and models using this exact same uh, foundation. So there will be periodic updates and pretty frequent updates up front, just the same way uh, it was when we launched the initial Mark 6 and the initial um, Mark 5. Um, but just look in this email notification, you'll see all of the um, updates that are included with this flash and you can make an informed decision whether or not you want to drop everything and install this update or wait for the next one. Um, that said, our updates are going to be incremental, which means that if you don't install this update and you choose to install the next update, you're still going to inherit all of the updates leading up to the latest uh, update file that you are installing. I'm going to try not to say the word update as many times as I have already. Uh, also in these notification emails, I'll include any notes or any special tips and tricks you need to know to successfully install this update. So for this one, the comms update and the system update must be installed separately this time around. Um, let me explain the difference between a comms update and a system update. Comms update is basically going to be updating uh, the way that the cluster communicates with your car. Uh, Right now, all the clusters are communicating over CAN bus, and that's basically like a software circuit, basically, that tells anything that's listening in what's going on with the vehicle. And that's how the car knows, or that's how the cluster knows how fast you're going, your engine temp, your RPMs, and all that. Now, periodically, we'll have updates to this comm software uh, that will open up different parameters, you know, make your car be able to um, communicate different things with the Apex cluster. Uh, these are usually smaller files and I'll, I'll walk you through that, but that's the comms update. 
Now, the system update is probably the one that's most um, interesting to y'all. This is gonna be where all of the software is. So your themes, your features, your controls, basically everything that you can see on the Apex cluster is going to be uh, controlled and updated through these system updates. Um, typically larger files, a very specific file type, but no matter what, in these emails, you are going to see exactly what's included in the update so that you can decide whether or not you want to install it. I'm always looking to improve the level of service that I offer. So on these emails, I will be asking for your feedback. Please, if there's ever anything I can do to make this process smoother for you, fill it in in the feedback box. I am looking at everyone, I am reading everyone because I am looking to continually improve the service that we offer you. From here, you're going to click the download button. It's gonna take you to a file, which is gonna show you exactly what the file name should be. You see can underscore app dot bin. I can't stress how important this is. Please, when you download the file, make sure that the file name you see is can app dot bin. If there's a parentheses one after it, if it's in a weird folder, if it's named something funny, if it turns into a zip file somehow, um, you're gonna run into issues, nine out of 10 issues that customers report. It's because the file name isn't exactly what the cluster is expecting. So please, please, please ensure for your comms updates, make sure that the file name is can underscore app dot bin. So I'm gonna save that. And then do the exact same thing with the system update. And you'll see here again, the file name is update.img. That's it, it's 300 megs. So again, like I said, a slightly larger file than the comms, but that'll help you understand what's what. Go to direct download. And you see here, cause there's already one in the folder, it added parentheses one, get rid of that. It's gotta be update.img for your software updates. What that's gonna do is download to my drive uh, where I will be able to move it over to my USB thumb drive. Okay, all that's left to do now is move the file over to your USB thumb drive. Now, this is just a regular old cheapo off of Amazon. It's like 32 gigs. Uh, as long as it's a gig or more, uh, you'll be good to go. Just pop this drive into your computer. And after a couple seconds, you will see it show up on your screen. Here it is. This one is called USB disk. All I need to do now is navigate to wherever those update files downloaded and drag them over to the USB disk. Now, depending on the size of the uh, update file, it may happen instantly or it may show like a, a dialogue. Just let it complete. And then once you go over to your USB disk, you should see the file in the root folder. You wanna make sure that is not in any subfolder and just take this extra step and reconfirm that the file name is exactly what you need it to be with nothing added to it, no zip file or anything like that. Just make sure it says exactly what the file name should be. Now that you've got the files on your USB thumb drive, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get into your vehicle and access wherever you tucked the USB adapter for the Apex cluster. You can see I've got mine in the driver footwell here where it's accessible, but I can still hide it um, when I'm not using it. Either turn your vehicle into accessory mode or ignition mode, but don't turn it on and just wait for everything to boot up and then you can plug in the USB into the USB adapter.
from this point as long as the file name was named correctly and it's in the root folder you should see the update dialog pop up on the apex cluster now it will give you a little countdown just in case you don't want to run the update you can either hit return or pull the plug um, but as long as you let the countdown continue then the update will run now some of the updates will show an update dialog while the update is happening and some of them will require the unit to reboot so that it can perform the update and then once it starts up you'll know that the update has installed. Now some of these uh, software updates, especially the system updates, might take a little bit longer. Just make sure that you don't turn off the vehicle or do anything weird. Just let the update continue and you should be all set. Once the unit is fully rebooted, what I like to do is just go into the menus using the steering wheel controls, check the software version to make sure that it updated, and then go through and click to see any of the new features or enhancements that were released in this update. That's it. If you have any issues, any comments, any concerns with this, please don't hesitate to either hit me in the comments or hit me on support at squarewheelsauto.com. Be glad to help you out. Enjoy.